Hello everybody, Navy Vet 76, and I wanted to show you my Enfield number no. 5 made by the Fazerkerley Arsenal in England. I've had this for a while. I've done some videos on the number no. 5, but I deleted them. And I see that uh, Classic has a bunch of these that they're selling now. These are part of the RTI Ethiopian horde, so to say, and they are in turn-in condition. When I got this, it was very dirty. Um, the metal that has been exposed, was the bluing was worn more so on the barrel end than down here at the receiver. The wood's got dings and dents. A little bit of surface rust, but it all cleaned up really good. Um, normally, I don't recommend anything from Royal Tiger Imports because uh, I've had really bad experiences with most of their stuff. This is one of the few items that Royal Tiger imported that is in actually really good condition as far as the metal goes and uh, the function. Uh, cosmetically, they they look battle worn, and they are. This particular one was made in July of 1945. Surprisingly, it's got very sharp rifling, and the bore looks very good. Um, you'll see in the video to follow that um, it shoots really well. Now, this one has. I just noticed it. I don't know why I never noticed that before, but been welded up here. I can't tell you why that is. Whatever. I never noticed that before, but in this light it shows up. However, in light of that, they must have had to um, put the uh, stripper clip thing back on. It's what it looks like. I have no idea. But this is a true number five. Um, the receiver is a number five. When you take the, bar the hand guard off, you've got the cuts in it, lightning cuts in the uh, barrel. It is a true number five. Um, it shoots well. I wish I had kept my other videos on this up, but I didn't. Um, for whatever reason, I can't remember at the moment. The butt plates on these, of course, it was made in 1945. That rubber is turned to rock. Um, but I, I really like the way it fired and shoots. And I thought I'd do a video on it since I've seen some other videos out there. This is one of the few guns, again, that I think is a win-win as far as being able to shoot it and not being a sewer pipe. So watch the video to follow and you decide for yourself. Navy Vet 76 out at the range. Today I thought I would bring my British 303 jungle carbine out. Classic Firearms is selling these now. These are turning condition, and uh, I see Classic is selling them hand select for an extra $30. These are Royal Tiger Imports. Classic is selling them now. They um, come in and they're dirty, got a little bit of surface rust on them, some dings and dents. However, the bore on this is immaculate. It functions very well. Um, just took a little clean up. They, um, I don't think they're a bad price considering the market today. Um, I've had this one for a while, so, you know, I don't know what classic has right at the moment as far as quality um, but I thought I would bring this out and uh, show it to you you can see there's quite a bit of wear 
as far as finish. Um, this one is made in the Azerkali factory. Pardon me if I screwed that up. This one was made in July of 45. As far as I can tell, that is the only serial number on the whole firearm, other than the import mark. And they're marked on the bottom. I can never get that to focus. Uh, there we go. IO, which is inner ordnance. And this is a Royal Tiger import. I thought I would try a couple different loads today. Let's see how they do. Of course, you know, I shoot at 50 yards. And the first, the first one I have here is 174 grain round nose interlock Hornady bullet. And my overall length is 2 inches 945 thousandths using the CCI large rifle primer. I'm using 40 IMR 4350 at 38.9 grains according to the Hornady book. The other one is a 150 grain Hornady SP using IMR 4895 at 32.4 grains. My overall length is 2 inches 992 thousandths using a CCI large rifle primer. So let's just get started here. We'll start with the 174 grain. I didn't turn my chronograph on, so maybe I should do that. I really like my chronograph. I like the app, too. I don't know if I should start at uh, with the side up or down. Why don't we try it down? And um, I'm just going to load we'll do five shot groups, 10 round magazine. And if you're not careful, you're going to get ring lock on these. There's 10. All right. And we are ready to rock and roll here. Shoot the uh, target on the right. I don't need this anymore since I record my data on my uh, that says 1743 feet per second I think that load data was for the long rifle it seems really slow for uh, for the carbine, but then again, with this short barrel, that powder is not burning all the way completely inside the barrel. Seventeen. 68. 
And that one doesn't want to feed. Okay. There we go. The aperture of this, I guess you call it the battle site, is really large. The trigger on this is really nice. And it didn't read. Okay. I hate it when that happens. None of them read. It should have started. Anyway, it's 1791. I checked my connection down here. I wonder why it's not um I don't know. Let's try another one. Seventeen ninety one. Unless it read a duplicate, and it's not reading. I don't know what what's going on here. Why my connection is not being made here? Let's go home. It says it's disconnected. Now it says it's synced. Okay, let's try it again. I honestly don't know why it's not recording. Yeah, that was a duplicate. It does now. It's saying it was a duplicate. That one says 1803. Now it's reading. Okay, that was five rounds. I want to look and see where we're hitting. Doesn't want to stay put there. Come on. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to adjust my scope some more. Bear with me, folks. That's better. And there are five shots and a shot low, which doesn't surprise me at that speed. Oh. That's interesting. Let's raise that up and shoot some more. With the peep sight. Now, this is a smaller aperture.
1747. It has to be. It has to be the barrel. As far as the speed goes, that's really slow. And it doesn't surprise me. Um, it takes a faster burning powder, I guess. This was just something I thought I would try. You got to start somewhere with these loads. The trigger, you can feel it. It's got a little bit of take up and then it's ready to go. I like that. Obviously, I'm not getting any pressure signs. Not at this speed. One minute to cease fire. One minute. 1749 1737 I will say there's not a lot of deviation there that's that's good well we got a break coming up so I'm going to pause the camera Well, this is the first 10 shots of the 174 grain bullet. There's wider ones with the wider aperture, and then there are five in here with the smaller aperture. This elevation is about the same. So I'm going to bring the elevation up. I got a few more of these. I had 25 loaded of this particular grain weight. So I'm going to try those. Well, as you've seen, I got 10 down there with 174 grains. I have 15 more of those. And I'm going to bring the elevation up. Well, oh, that's really tight in there. There we go. That spring is really tight. Magazine is tight. All right. I'm not sure what setting that is. I don't know where I'm at at the moment. Okay. That's 200 yards. I see it now. It's set at 200. Let's try roughly, I'm guessing that's right around 250. And we got stuck one. Got to really hit it. Okay. I like peep sights. I don't know where I'm going to start that. Okay, now I don't want to start. New group. Start. I'm surprised at the group I'm getting with this load.
That one's 1853. 1761. I got gunpowder all over the table here. Seventeen thirty five. Seventeen thirty four. And one more. Seventeen sixty eight. Now I'll look through the scope and see where we're at. Well, I brought it at maybe two inches. So at least I know. We'll go three fifty. Okay, so we've got it set at 350 yards. Seventeen fifty seven. Seventeen forty nine. Seventeen sixty seven. Seventeen seventy four. Seventeen sixty four. I got five more of this load left. And we're I am pretty much there. Bring up just one more quick. You can load right through the top without taking the magazine out. Because these can be loaded with stripper clips. I don't own stripper clips. That's their waste of time when you're shooting on the bench. And that's the last five of this particular load. And this does have a rubber butt pad on it from 1945. And it's hard as a rock from age, and it shows it shows wear from age as well. Um, you can feel the recoil; it's not absorbing any kind of recoil. Actually, my shoulder's doing all the work.
and we're still running right around 1750 feet per second 1748 i'm guessing we're averaging about 1755 if i had to guess without doing the math of course the chronograph this program will give me the average Seventeen forty-two. Hmm. That one's hot. Seventeen forty-nine. I have one more left. And it doesn't want to pick up. There we go. Now we're in 1682. And that's all I have of the um, 174 grain bullets and save the group and then let me get you some save group data here okay the first six the average was 1770.50 feet per second my standard deviation was 30.76 my maximum speed was 1809 feet per second and my minimum was 1737. not bad we go to the second group And we're looking at an average of, what? Fire. What average of 1770.50 again. And the max speed was the same. Am I actually looking at the same thing twice? Yeah, I was. <clears throat> okay, I got a 15 shot group here. And the uh, average is 1754.8. The standard deviation was 35.04, the max was 1853, and the minimum was 1682. So I'm going to take you down there and we'll uh, look at that. And 174 grains were... Well, I didn't pause the camera. That's fine. We're going to walk down here. So far, my assessment with the 174 grain bullets is the speed is a little slow. They've got some decent groups. I brought the elevation up. We started down here. And we slowly moved up. I could have brought the elevation up some more. But we don't have actually have shotgun pattern. That's uh, really decent groups. And I think uh, we're going to move on to the next load. Okay. 
Now we're going to use the uh, 150 grain Hornady SPs, which is a jacketed lead tip bullet. And the powder is IMR4895 at 32.4 grains. And all this data comes from the Hornady reloading manual. <coughs> My previous ones, the 174 grain bullets were uh, using IMR4350 at 38.9 grains. And as you can see, that was a light load for this gun. Now, I don't know what's going to happen here with this load. Again, these are all experimental loads. Shooting for groups, checking the speed. So, the gun is warm from firing. We'll bring the sight down to a start point. Obviously, the point of contact with the target will be different because of the lighter bullet. So, we'll bring it down all the way. We're going to shoot the target on the left. <clears throat> I'm going to shut my headset off. First, that's uh, 1,810 feet per second. Seventeen fifty three. Seventeen thirty five. Seventeen nineteen. Seventeen fifty seven. The bolt is very smooth on this rifle. Seventeen oh five. How many did I shoot there? Five. Okay. No, I shot six, but I only recorded five. I'm going to look and see if we can kind of group. It's um, very low. Very low. Oops. 
bring this up to 400. Phone's ringing. Seventeen twenty one. Seventeen sixty four. Seventeen forty two. Seventeen fifty five. All right. We'll save that group. I'll take a peek. All right. That was the correct adjustment. I think you'll like this one. And there was my first group. And there was my second group. So I'm guessing that's not bad. That's four shots. Down here was six. I'm liking that. It's not really much different in pattern from the 174 grain bullet. I had to bring the elevation up to 450 yards to get it to hit there at 50 yards. Now the load data I'm using is right out of the Hornady handbook. And I'm guessing that data was developed for the uh, Number one, MK3, possibly. And I am not aware of where I can get load data for the number five. But um, I imagine the number five was shooting the same ammunition as the number one, and the sights would have been a calibrated for the differences between the two rifles. So, even though I'm happy with the way this rifle's shooting, I'm confused about the speed on this. I can, I can probably guesstimate I could use a heavier load, but I wouldn't want to risk it without uh, some kind of reference or somebody else may have data for the number five that shoots point of aim with the sights. Like I'm at 400, and 400 yards at the moment and I'm shooting at 50 and hitting the bullseye. So I don't know if I want to complain about that or not. It, it seems to be working. So, you know, I just bumped it up a little bit more. Two clicks, actually. With this 150 grain bullet. 
I'm not really seeing a lot of difference in accuracy between the 174 grain bullet and the 150 grain bullet at 50 yards. Now, probably there would be notable differences in, let's say, 100. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I like to shoot at things I can see, and I'm pushing 70 years old, and my eyes aren't that great. And I just start the chronograph. Darn it. It helps to start the chronograph because it's where I keep my data. I should probably print all that out before I lose it down the line. I will say, for aging eyes, my experience has been the peep sights look a lot better for me. And I don't know if I'm... So far my zero hasn't wandered. And these are noted for having a wandering zero. Each time it's taken out, it may shoot differently. They were only in service until 1947 when they were they discontinued production. I think they stayed in service a lot longer than that because this one came out of Ethiopia. And the Ethiopians were the pure shooting anything they'd get their hands on. If you look at what Tiger Imports has been selling. And that one's 1744. I want to peep and see what we got. Yep. Yeah. I'm saying it likes a 150 grain bullet. Um, it likes a 174 grain bullet. Um, I read somewhere, I believe this is a one in seven twist. Now don't, don't take that as accurate because I read it somewhere. Um, However, I am finding that this gun seems to be friendly with the 174, the 150, but the more I'm shooting the 150, the more I like the 150 bullet. This rifle, actually, you can see the history of this rifle just in the patina. These were... I've got rim lock on that one. Sometimes you can... Yep, i got rim lock. So... I can get that... A, Pull it ahead of the other one without pulling the magazine out, which I can't. In this mag, this is a real pain to get out. But let me show you. Okay, I fixed it. I can't show you now. So, what happens is the rim on these, if the rim gets behind the one on the bottom, the bolt can't push it forward. 
And that's called rim lock. And these rim cartridges are notorious for that. You have to watch how you load them in your magazine. Eighteen thirty two, seventeen fifty three. Kind of hurts. Seventeen sixty four. Seventeen oh five. Seventeen thirty one. Seventeen fifty six. Starting to see a heat barrage off the barrel. <clears throat> Seventeen sixty-three. Seventeen fifty-five. That one was seventeen hundred. Seventeen fifty-five. And that's all I've got. That's all fifty of them for this rifle. I think um, for those of you that are curious about the RTI Royal Tiger Imports number fives. From my personal experience, from my personal experience, it's a good gun. That being said, I've had experience purchasing other firearms from RTI, and they were all crap. The bores were sewer pipes, and I swore I'd never buy another firearm from RTI. <sighs> but, you know, there are standouts, and this is one of them. Every once in a while, you get lucky. So if you're going to get one from Classic, do the hand select, and I think you'd be happy with it. Now, that's the 150 green bullet. At 50 yards I think that's a really good load <laughs> had to set my elevation to I thought I said 450 but I believe it's 400 yards and you're shooting pretty accurately I as you can see the exterior of those rifles is is dirty and rough it took some cleaning when i got it i did some videos on my number five quite a while ago and i deleted it so 
thought it was time to do another one. I thought I'd never say that, but you know, because all I've done is complain about the IO imports or Royal Tiger now. You know, it's okay gun. I like the patina on it. It definitely shows its use. You can see the butt pad is worn and rock hard. There's some surface rust. You know, you just kind of keep it oiled up, cleaned up, make sure everything's functional, and leave it just like it is. You go to, quote, restoring these firearms, and you lose the history, and you've destroyed the value that collectors are looking for. That's all I got on my number five. Have a great day.